Good morning, Friday morning. Uh, haven't done much filming at all because because um, oh, wifey's been sick, haven't you, wifey? Yeah, because she does so much. Jenna's been it sick. It was impossible for Elsa to replace me in video at the same time. So really. Oh yeah. What can I say? Yep. So here in the calves. Just gonna step this fence over for these wee girls, and then uh, yeah, we'll go have a bit of a tour around the farm, show you what's what. Uh, we've got some other brakes to shift and use to check at the lease block and bits and pieces. So um, yeah, we'll just get this done. And beautiful day though, isn't it? Do you want to hold that for me? I will gladly. Hey Snow Dog. So one of the questions in the comments uh, that I read last night was about how we try and ensure that the ewes, once they come to lambing, uh, at best survivability and stuff. Uh, so we'll talk a wee bit about that, about what we do to feed ewes uh, to their maximum, to the optimum. To ensure that you know they lamb well and then they milk well. Look at your fluffy little coats. What does he think he's getting? The duck. So I've been feeding these girls break grass and uh, ad lib hay, just to kind of stretch them out a bit. So I have to come back with the tractor later with another uh, bale in their feeder. Yeah, mud, it's uh, even girls with this much space, you know, they sit around a feeder and make some mud, so it's just something you can't really get away from at the moment, this time of year, contrary to what uh, some people believe about livestock farming. <laughs> yeah, but you can control the amount of mud. You can, yep, but you're going to have some. Yep. what I'm at, getting it. Yep. So for the early ewes, we've got um, the rest of them, are the main a lot of early ewes are at the lease block. They're just starting on crop down there. These girls here are the lighter condition early ewes, so they're in a good grass paddock. They've just come out of this other one on the hill face over there. They've got a grain feeder in with them. I just need to shift that with the tractor. Um, yeah, so just trying to, trying to feed them up as much as possible, not push them. So that's taking that bottom end out and the ones that aren't hacking at the lease block will come back here and just go onto this. So there's always that tail end which drag all your percentages down and everything. So that's how we try and manage some of them. So this is what I've been ticking away at this last week. Uh, another fence line. So this is this is going to be forestry block here. This is still going to be grazed. This is all, all the scrubs being sprayed when the helicopter was here. So uh, yeah, cut the fence. Had this one going up along the skyline up there got another sorry snowy got another one of our taranaki gates uh in here so this is one of the mechanisms i built using yeah it's just some gelf pipe and a, and a couple of threads uh, threaded gelf pipe and, a, and an angle so it's come out pretty well just got to put a hot wire on the top uh run out of end insulators and a barb a barb on this one so what do you think mrs bird you haven't seen any of this it's very impressive been a long time coming this fence yeah yeah we did this, wanting it for a long time haven't we? did this uh, fence line a long time ago so yeah. a bit tricky yeah it's a bit tricky getting up here at the moment in the cyber side um it's pretty steep and uh it pushes this thing to the limits with diff lock and everything but that's all right we've got sunshine today so should be pretty good right uh we're gonna go check some cows get right out the back now that we can see the hills um We'll check the cows. Yeah, no fog. It's freaking cold though. Oops. Oh, I'm going off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I wouldn't mind bringing the digger up here with the mulch to just to try and clear some of this easier stuff. So just checking this culvert that we put in a while ago, uh, yeah, we had a fair bit of rain, I think the water level came up to, well, about where I'm standing, came up to about here, so never went over the top, and let's just settle back down again, it's all looking pretty good. So, it probably is a slightly small culvert for what, for, for what it is, but um, I think we're, yeah, it'll be fine, we just got to keep making sure it's clear and It'll work, it's working so far. So these girls, all over here, are our hoggets. And if you've been following along, you'll know that we, this is the first year we have um, gone with not mating hoggets. So we're quite surprised in two things. One is what they can, the, the feed that they've been cleaning up and eating. Um, and two is, how good they look still for it. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Like, to me, they look great. Um, and they are essentially a tool for the feed and the pasture to then improve it for later as well. Um, and, you know, you've got that whole longevity thing where if they um, can grow out properly in the first year or two, then that's their whole lifelong and push them on the hill, get them used to grazing on the hill. Rather yes, than when they're, Rather than spend their whole life on the flat as a hogget or as a lamb, and then when they go on the hill as a tutuf, after this, for, to, to have their second lamb, yeah, we've, we've found that they, um, like conditions are pretty extreme here with the weather and the steepness, so they, they can, yeah, they've been failing as a tutuf, really. Um, or maybe we've just been pushing them too hard, but doing this this way yeah they'll get used to grazing on the hill and so they'll all be happy days it's a behavioral thing as well like the two tooth when we put them on the hill they usually sit down the bottom and then you push them up the hill and then they come back down the bottom and even when the feed is further up they still prefer to be down the flats where it's just behavioral yeah, so if you can and teach, teach these guys to go and hunt for their food now hunt hunt the grass hunt the grass yeah <laughs> That's exciting, um, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, 420 in this mob, so there's a few to choose from if um, we don't like you know, the wee tail end of them. We, we only need 400. Yeah, fish, fish. yeah. Seeing how this goes, I might look at keeping 500 next year, but um, just, yeah, see, see how these go through the winter. So right up top here, checking on the cows. They've got a run of two paddocks at the moment. We'll push them into here. So those are the few we've just pushed in. Those are the neighbors ones over there. Sorry about the sun. Um, and the plan is, yeah, chew this paddock out and then they can go right at the back, right at the back for the winter. And uh, we'll just keep an eye on the weather. Just kind of see how they get on out there. But yeah, stunning day up here. Beautiful Kenry Plains over there. Yeah, magic spot. So these girls are the lighter condition hill ewes. Um, so these are, yeah, so we've got them on kale. This is kale and plantain. They're getting like a th about a three day break. And then I've just dragged the hay in here because we've got a runoff paddock out there, but the gateway's getting a bit muddy. So um, they've got ad lib hay that we, uh, we let them kind of nibble on when they need it, which, um, you know, makes sure that slows the passage through the room and makes sure that they digest as much of the kale as is. Uh, that they're eating as possible yeah and then so once these girls are shorn we'll have another draft off uh so they're getting shorn as soon as we can as soon as the weather plays ball uh we'll have another draft up and pull any other lighter ones off they'll come on here and join these girls um the rest of them are up on the hill up there yeah just ticking through uh cleaning out some paddocks and whatnot so but next year we're looking at changing the whole system and bringing the earlies and hill ewes into one mating mob. Probably push lambing back two weeks. Um, just trying to work through all the intricacies of all that at the moment. So it's exciting. Uh, trying to have kind of 14, 15, 1600 ewes in, a, in one mob uh, rather than having all these split mobs everywhere. Um, yeah, just a lot to figure out at the moment. So we'll keep you updated about what happens there. 
of course, it's Buttercup, George's <laughs> pet. Hey! Looking a bit raggy at the bottom. Oh, sure. <laughs> Needs hearing, yeah. Buttercup's not really a fan of me. Buttercup. <laughs> it's Buttercup. just Georgia. Hello. <laughs> Georgia will still come up and give her a good cuddle. It's quite cute. So these are the ewes we've got down the lease block, the early ones due to lamb 1st of August. Uh, so they've been in here two days. This was a was crop paddock uh, last year, uh, cow and plantain. And then we just kind of let the plantain come away using this as a runoff paddock for this year. So just a bit of tucker to eat, beating a bit of regrowth kale uh, and starting to get into some rough stuff. So the plan for these girls is, um, oh, we are, uh, we're about a month away, four weeks away from drafting off the first cycle ewes, bringing them home to lamb. So they're just gonna start walking onto this crop. Got a few temporary fences set up over there. So they'll start walking onto there. And then, um, yeah, we'll just break feed that. We've got two paddocks here. Um, the crops haven't done <laughs> that well, just with the dry over the summer. Uh, so they're, they're a bit, a bit, um, low light and yield um, but yeah we've got some baleage we'll poke out so that there'll be enough here for these girls but um, yeah that's the plan there so they're looking pretty good they're pretty happy with their condition and everything like I say light ones are back at home uh, getting grain and good grass paddocks but uh, we're not shifting them today just gonna drop a salt block off and yeah we might start running them on tomorrow or or Sunday. Got a bale on the front, uh, square bale, so we'll just push this feeder out of the mud for these calves, give them a bit of a new spot and uh, cut this bale, put it in there for them. Back up here with the cows, just put a fence up between the neighbour's place and our cows, dropped the salt block off there. Yeah, they should be all good in here for a wee bit. They got water, they got feed. Yeah, good fencing, should be great. Beautiful crisp, all winter day. Looking back over to Christchurch, way over there. In the hut. Hut shepherds up way down the bottom there. That's what we've got uh, looking, uh, planning at the moment to take that one away and uh, put a bigger one there. So that only sleeps about four people. So looking at taking that one away and putting like a 10, 10 bunk one there, something like that. So just searching options, seeing what ones we can find a kit set and then modify or yeah, tricky to get things in here. Um, really needs to fit on the back of a tip trailer if we're going to buy one that's pre-built so looking at all that and uh, yeah no doubt it'll be on on the YouTube channel um, when we decide to do that and pull the trigger yeah so, right we'll, uh, we'll head home
couple of hunters that have come out to um, to stay the night in the back hut out there. Um, John, you would have seen him on the channel before if you've been watching for a while. So he helped me with the water supply and then he's helped me with weaning and bits and pieces. Uh, used to be one of our neighbours. But yeah, we go spend the night out there for a couple of nights and that's the reason for um, for trying to increase the number of people that can sleep as well. So maybe a couple of families could go out there and have some pretty cool experiences. So. All right, we're gonna leave this video here. We'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully you enjoyed a bit of a farm update. And uh, yeah, see you later.